Oh, what's going on, YouTube? It's Joey here, Daily Vinyl. It has been way, way too long. I um, have a number of reasons why this is. Um, namely, I got a new job, which is making me travel. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. I'm in Canada. Um, but also because my camera, my flip cam that I made all my previous posts with, has uh, seen better days. I have had four failed video creation attempts that I set and sp spoke into and then looked at the flip and it didn't record it. So we lost footage and time is precious. So those didn't work out. And then I tried to do one on my phone and it would never upload to YouTube. So we lost two more videos because um, that happened. So I don't know how to explain it, but I miss you, my YouTube fans. Uh, and I, I wanted to, to put something out there. So in the interest of Record Store Day, uh, happy Record Store Day, uh, I'm posting this video called A Look at April. And I want to talk about a number of new releases some stuff in the vinyl community, and most importantly, a hot topic for me uh, of late, vinyl etiquette. Um, I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but I think there are a lot of little things that are healthy to think about when it comes to being a, a, a nice person in the vinyl community. So, um, Let's sort of run with this and kick off our conversation for April with um, some pointers on vinyl etiquette. So one, um, being, uh, having, having etiquette in your own vinyl spaces. So at home when you're managing your records, put them away, you know, keep them organized, clean them properly. Don't, uh, don't buy so many that they're all over the house and they're in disarray. You know, try to try to manage your records, take care of them. They're not cheap. Um, yeah, I guess some of them could be, but usually they aren't anymore. And and they're worth you taking care of them. So so put pride into them, and uh, it will be you'll be benefited in the end. Your records will last longer and be better for it. Um, and uh, obviously that will come full circle at the record when. Uh, you think about taking care of them, how long they're going to last. Uh, more importantly than having self-etiquette is having etiquette for others. So uh, this is almost more so directed at people who, who don't collect records, or maybe they do and so do their friends, but having that etiquette when you're in and around others' records. Um, and like a big one is someone who thinks they're doing you a favor by flipping the record. Um, and I would say unless you ask someone to flip the record, um, I would say, for me, that's a no-no. Don't do it. It's, uh, one, it, 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 it makes me feel really, ah, when somebody goes to flip my record. I don't know if that's going to hurt the needle, or if they know how to do it right, or if they're going to, you know, adjust the tone on it properly, or there's a number of things. Uh, most commonly is, is just how they handle it. And it's always the person who thinks they know that wants to do it that does it up. So you don't do it. Don't do it unless you're asked. Just don't touch it. Uh, same thing. If you're at a buddy's house and he's got records, don't just start rifling through them and pull one out and start to stick it on unless you ask. Hey, can I put on a record? And sort of see what the uh, knee jerk response is. Um, you know, going to a record store, there's etiquette there too. Um, you know, Make sure if somebody's there looking in the one section you want to be, which nine times out of ten, it'll be the only person in the store, and they are right where you went to look. Um, assuming you're not just there to frivolously, frivolously browse, um, give them space. You know, don't hover, don't pull them. That's that's annoying. Um, nobody likes that. You don't like it when people browse over your shoulder. Don't reach across somebody because you see something you want or you want a record two over. That's that's annoying. You know, have patience. They were there first. If what's meant to be yours is meant to be yours, it'll be there when you get there. Um, don't leave the records all tipped forward uh, in, in an unorderly fashion. You know, push them back. One, it's, it's better for the records if they push back. And 
and two, it's uh, you know, it just it looks bad for the shop, among other things. Um, if you go to uh, trade shows or record shows, um, don't beg or, or or ask for discounts that aren't necessary. I'm telling you, if you buy enough and it's twenty five dollars, likelihood of the guy saying just give me twenty and we'll call it a day is pretty high. In the record community, I think people do that pretty commonly, and if you are asking for it, at least from my end, when I do record shows, I'm not nearly as likely to give it to you as if you let me do it on there. So there's that. Also, big one, don't go around to everybody's area and ask them to hold records so that you can then make up your purchase decisions at the end. That's not cool. Um, one, it's holding out on inventory. I spent a lot of time getting together and pricing and pulling out there and sort of everybody else selling records um, that you're probably not going to buy all of and now I can't sell it because I'm holding it. I don't want to be a jerk and tell you no because I want you to buy something, but you're really kind of nixing the whole entire purpose of bringing the records to the event when you say, hey, don't uh, have these ones out for sale. I might buy some. You know, I want to put them all out for sale. If you want them, buy them now, please, or move along. So if you do that, and you never notice how that's bad, now hopefully you'll understand. Uh, you know, other things to be impo important uh, thoughts on vinyl etiquette. Thrift stores, they usually have only one small rack, you know. If somebody's there digging, don't go crowd in on them. It's sort of the same as the record store thing, but this is even worse, because at a record store, you've got the whole store. This is one little area. Um, yeah. We all look forward to the day where we get there, right, and some collection just got dumped off and we want to hoard it first. And if you see good things there, I know it can be daunting to say, I don't want that person to take everything good, I want something too. But you got to ease up on the space, let that person dig first. It's sort of like rhyme or reason, left to right, down, up to down. And, you know, if there's two racks, maybe you can stand on the left while they're here. and Hopefully they've moved from left to right. And they're not starting right moving to left, or whatever have you. There's just courtesy there. So be mindful of it. Um, think about those things. If you have some vinyl etiquette ideas, thoughts, comments, I would love to hear them. Leave those below. A um, couple of other things I want to talk about. One is I want to do a giveaway. I have this uh, Death Grips Fashion Week LP from last year's Record Store Day. It's not open. I want to give it to somebody trying to give it away on Instagram, didn't get enough uh, traction, uh, didn't get enough response on that as I would like, so I'm, I'm, I'm not giving it away on there, unfortunately. So we'll try it here on YouTube, um, be creative, uh, post a video, uh, put it on Facebook, go on Instagram, find me, and tag me, whatever you want to do, I am daily underscore vinyl on Instagram, I am at daily vinyl online on Facebook course right here on YouTube um, do something to impress me uh, I'll I'll ship it to you for free on me my uh, my happy to do thing if you will. so if you like death grips experimental hip-hop um, you know I, I'm giving that away so if you don't know that album and you don't need to it's free vinyl right what could be wrong with free so let's talk about the record store day list tomorrow. What are you excited for? Um, you going out? Uh, I am in Canada working. I really trying to cut out, make a few uh, hours to somewhere. I'm in Edmonton, very far north, um, and, and hit a store. But I have my wife hopefully going to a local store back in Phoenix, where I'm from, to get me a couple of things. Um, Big day tomorrow. Record store day just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I, I know there's uh, this uh, saber tooth tiger. Go see the saber, saber tooth tiger. It's Sean Lennon, um, and it's pretty good. They're releasing something. I think that or it was his project with um, Les Claypool. Uh, as we speak, I am trying to pull up the record store day list here so we can uh, sort of talk about it, but it's not being friendly. Um, let's talk about some new releases. What's hot right now? Because I haven't done any reviews really this year other than Ryan Adams, which still kicks ass. Uh, Prisoner is a good one. Um, Father John Misty's Pure Comedy. If you haven't checked that out yet, I think it's a return to form. I think he had something to prove 
after releasing I Love You Honey Bear, it's, uh, it's very, very cynical. Uh, musically, he takes some big risks, putting things out there, breaking the fourth wall. Um, but he's also showing a lot of restraint in places where he could have taken songs and, and blown them out, and he doesn't. And he kind of holds back, and it makes the song, after you've listened to it a couple of times, that much more. Because it sort of creates these feelings of longing and, and desire to hear them again. So that's, uh, I guess, musicianship and branding all at once, I suppose. Which the Father John Misty brand is quite good. Um, big and well recognized at this point. Also, New Future Islands, not uh, breaking the mold, uh, actually sort of returning more so to pre-singles, uh, Future Island sounds, making more traditional, simplified stuff, but uh, really good, really good uh, record. I like the Debbie Harry feature on there. Uh, Cave is probably my favorite song on there right now. If you haven't heard uh, any Future Islands ever, it's sort of like uh, pop music with a dance punk feel. And, of course, the lead vocalist is very eccentric, especially live. Uh, so, Sec Chicken, they're talented guys. And uh, as a bass player, really, really get off on the music because the bass is the forefront of all the melody. All the music comes from the bass guitar. Um, so, talking about the record store day list, what else do we have here? What are you looking forward to buying? I see some Danny Brown. That's all right. Johnny Cash. It's a children's album, though. I don't see that flying off the shelf. Uh, the Cure, Greatest Hits, both regular and acoustic, that's cool, although they press too many. 3,250 of each might be too much just for the states. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Fleetwood Mac, The Kinks, I never go wrong with either of them. Do you need them, though? It's a big question. Do I need The Kinks? Um, I probably have plenty that I've gotten in dollar bins over the years. Um, the Offspring re-releasing their first record, only 2,500. That's pretty cool if you're into, um, you know, 90s punk. Uh, what else? Motorhead, Santana, Tegan and Sarah. A lot of standout uh, popular names at this point. So you can see them sort of diving into it. And a ton of various artist stuff. Nothing I'm that big of a fan of or feeling like I need. Pineapple Express soundtrack. That's kind of cool. Especially if you like that movie. Um, I don't know. It's, it's always one of these things, and, and maybe you agree with me, where Records for Day sort of draws me in, the allure of the RSD. I don't really care what I'm going out to get. I never usually have anything I'm pining over. There's usually one or two titles I think that would be cool to have for whatever reason. Uh, you know, South Park's Christmas songs on Mr. Hanky, Poop Smelling Vinyl, and Brown Vinyl. That's fun novelty. I like South Park. I wanted to have that. Um, but... I go to Record Store Day and I see everything there and something I didn't read on the list or didn't realize would catch my eye and I buy something. And then I always remember, oh, I got this on Record Store Day. That's when I got it. I made a memory, sort of an extension of what we do in the big vinyl community. And uh, I don't know. It just it adds emphasis to something I enjoy. So I like that about it. Uh, let me know. Comments below continue this discussion. What Record Store Day release titles were you looking forward to? Did you get them uh, for a week into the future? Um, hi, this is Joey in the past. I hope you got your Record Store Day titles. I hope you're not that guy who bought five of the one limited one and is trying to hawk them on discogs. Fuck you. Uh, that's not cool. Let's not do that to each other. What else can we talk about here on the April update? Um, Hootie the Blowfish. Counting Crows. Two 90s bands that I grew up listening to on repeat. They re-released August and Everything After and Cracked Review on vinyl. Get those reissues. Um, part of vinyl etiquette is not judging other people's records. You don't have to buy them. So if you're judging me right now, then I don't care. I love both those records. August and Everything After is brilliant. So well written. Adam Gertz, way peak performance. And Cracked Review has sold like 16 million copies. It's up there with, like, Beethoven, which has had, you know, five, six, seven centuries ahead, and they've sold as many. So um, I'm not the only one. So really cool that they've re-released them. Uh, and uh, Hootie and the Blowfish are really interesting yellow uh, color, but, um, you know, it's very limited quantities, if any, you could get back in the 90s of that album. So cool to see them 
taking cues from the resurgence here, if you will, and pressing some 90s stuff. I really like that. Um, and last thing, before, before I get out of here, before I wrap it up, because we're at 15 minutes, and I know that these videos can linger on. So I want to suggest Paste Quarterly. They used to put out a subscription magazine once a month with a CD sample. They're doing a quarterly 12 by 12 beautifully done uh, uh, magazine. It's gorgeous. The cinematography is great. The ads in it are even pretty. Uh, they've got a lot of craft beer references, counterculture, that kind of stuff, indie music. Uh, but then they put out an LP. And it's really nice, clear, Coke bottle LP, uh, several uh, popular but under the radar popular bands. And it's like 70 bucks. You get four LPs, four magazines, once every three months, and uh, tastefully done. I like what they're doing. If you haven't heard of or seen that around, Google it right now. Check out what Paste is doing for, uh, I guess, going analog in the magazine world as well as the music world. So double trouble there. Um, also, Blaylock's Indie Rock Playlist, something I've followed along with for nearly 10 years now. He uh, puts a lot of work into what he does. Uh, huge website, showed me a lot of music that has gone to get uh, some minor success, um, introduced me to local natives in like 2007, and they're, you know, main stage of Coachella this year, um, so stuff like that. He did a Kickstarter campaign, put eight bands that have no contracts, I believe, on a really cool, clear record with like blue, black and yellow spots, and really nice art that kind of goes along with the thematics of his website, and it, it tailored perfectly for the community something new. So go to B-I-R-P, burp.net, I believe. If that doesn't pull it up, Google Blaylock's in the rock playlist. Um, take a look at what he's got going on there. You can stream tons of music, download huge playlists, you can check them out on iTunes and Spotify. But more importantly, uh, uh, if you're in the vinyl thing, support him. Buy one of these mixes. It's cheap. It's like 15 bucks, I think. And, uh, it's really cool. So I'm into that. Uh, I'll actually, I'll show you a photo of it. DIRP Kickstarter vinyl. And if I was at home in Phoenix and not in this hotel, I would um, I would show it. I, I have it. Uh, this this is it. Uh, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show a picture on the video. Um, and you can see the cool art and it's a clear colored one. Um, but it's really neat. Uh, and, and like I said, tastefully done. Um, so uh, check that out if you can. Uh, cool thing. Um, same new uh, Third Man Records release. Uh, they had uh, a great package. Uh, I, 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 it's Margot um, something. That's how much I like her. Well, I'm not familiar with her work, but I get all of the Third Man Record quarterly packages. I like them. Uh, but the 45 adapter they sent this past month is double sided. It's like a stainless steel and copper. It's freaking beautiful. And this double uh, bullhorn pin, you know, just like this, I can touch you here. Um, and there's two linked together. Uh, and so you put the both buttons on this little chain between them. It's really neat. It's really neat. So, as always, high quality stuff, cool, unique pressings, Jack White serving the vital community, uh, adamantly uh, getting my purchase. So, Mara. Okay. It's late here in Edmonton, and I've technically worked for 72 hours straight, so bear with me here. Um, talking about uh, classics, I just want to mention the importance of Tears for Fears, Songs for the Big Chair. If you've never listened to that album on vinyl, it's made for it. The production value goes so much further, uh, hearing Head Over Heels and things like that. Um, you've never heard, shout, shout, let it on. So you heard it spun on vinyl. It's a different experience. So if you don't like Tears for Fears, well, can't help you there. But uh, if you've listened to it in the past, uh, maybe on an iPod, a classic or something once upon a time, you need to pick up Songs for the Big Chair on vinyl and uh, give it a spin. It's, it's a great record. Um, and let's see, one more thing. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm looking for a hot buzz topic such as vinyl etiquette uh, for May. So if you have a suggestion, uh, drop me a line here in the comments below. Um, as always, I, I do appreciate those of you who stay with me for these blabbering conversations. I, uh, 
I really want to get back to it, post more regular videos again like I used to, but while I cannot guarantee it will be that, especially while I'm out of camera, I'm going to use my laptop as I am right now. This seems to be working all right, and um, we'll do at least one video a month, if not more. So if you like this, if you want to talk vinyl at least once a month with me, subscribe to the channel. Just one button right there, or maybe it's right there. Um, give me one of these, um, or one of these, whatever you want to do. Um, and uh, more importantly, just, uh, you know, keep, keep spinning the, the wax, man. Keep digging the crates. And uh, have a really, really good record store day tomorrow. Uh, I, I hope you get everything that you uh, set out to find. Take care.